what kind of things do you like that's organic besides like mayonnaise love really because the last organic mayo you just had was like expired in may and you just ate it was it. pretty delicious <laughs> that's what i'm like that's how good organic is it don't expect because you were in the bathroom all night you know i were you yeah like singing songs is that why the <laughs> fan hope. was on yeah. all night and plus the bidet was like <laughs> 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 that was me in the bidet <laughs> Actually, what do you guys think about expired things? Are you like strict? If it hits that date, you're like, I'm done. Well, some or do things, you give yeah. it grace? Some things. Like anything What's dairy, that's a risk? hard expiration date for me. Because I think they're kind of fake. Well, I heard, I heard it's like you actually have more time than you think. Right. So yeah. like when it comes to milk, okay. shout out I. Yes. Milk. The I in milk. When it comes to milk, like I think you can wait another week or so. Milk's Obviously the literally you can the smell one it. I can't. Test it. Oh, no. Milk's the literally one I can't do. If I see the date, I'm like, I get turned yeah. off by it. Oh, Everything I definitely else I don't do care. Too. Everything else I don't and care. And plus, when it starts to expire, it has that little twangy taste. Yeah. Oh, but I think it might be in your it. head sometimes. No. I do think it is good after a week, but you see the date, you're like, wait, does it? It has that twang. Is there a smell? About the twang. I definitely do that with like like meat, though. Oh, meat, yeah. I get really yeah. nervous about expiration dates with meat. Mm. Actually, I eat such old meat. I freeze it and I'll just. Well, that's different. Six it'll freeze. Later, it'll I'm still like, be well. in my. It'll be in my fridge. It won't be frozen. <laughs> well, we'll, so, uh, well. well, technically, the Don't expiration date it. doesn't work for you then, because usually, it isn't it good like a week after you thaw it or something. Yeah, you're not supposed to eat it. And like a week, it's okay to eat a week after though, right? Like you put it in the fridge for a week? No, you put it in the freezer for like six months. Oh. And then you let it. It's thawed, and now it's in the fridge. Oh, if for I take a it week. out of the freezer, I'm cooking it. Yeah. So I give milk, it a day. Milk freaks me out though. Like there would be so many times I'll see the expiration date. I'll do the smell test, and I was like look in there to make yeah. sure there's like no lump. something. And I see. I swear you to you, swear every time up. I see, and I like pour it in, and be like, it's fine. This don't even taste right. <laughs> it might just all it's be in my head. head. I think it I is. I swear. I think I see like a little film on top. Yeah, almost. you see a film. I'm done. I'm puking. <laughs> I'm immediately throwing it. Yeah. Well, the that the thing that I really can't do is cheese when cheese goes bad, and it has that. Yeah. Like, I don't. How do you describe it? It smells like a dirty foot. It's not yeah. like rotten, but it just smells horrible. It smells bad oh, because I remember is. there was one time like I was like, okay, like I mean so. maybe because it smells, but my mom's like, it's still good, and so I put it in my mm. omelet. I'm like, I can taste the dirty foot taste. Like, uh, and then I remember the there was one time taste. Brandon came over and he had like cheese. I think that was a little expired in the microwave, and I was like, do you are you gonna eat that? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, do you yeah. not smell that? And I don't think you tasted it though. Yeah, or I didn't maybe taste you, it. That was a weird part. It but smelled it just smelled really bad. Really bad, but it, it, it tasted, tasted normal. Delicious. Yeah, it tasted like, normal. So I was like, cheese. I don't but know. Then later, it did not feel normal. <laughs> so I think it was expired. Honestly, I feel like if you eat expired cheese, you'll become sterile. Like, like this, this next, next story. story. I forgot. I'm Sam, on the Sam, you're on the button. You're on the button. Sam. Come on, dude. Do better. Go ahead and do the. <laughs> But I think oh, also brother. I the, uh, oh. We haven't even done the intro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what podcast I is forgot. this? I forgot. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie and I'm here with Brandon, Sam, SJ. And I guess let's get to the first story now. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I do love that sound. Oh, this, it is my favorite sound on this board. It's my favorite sound. But we need to change every other sound on the board. Except okay, for the well, I gave you the password after six in, months. But I gotta wait till I get home. So. <laughs> well, I have some cards if you want to use them. I mean, it's not gonna matter because we're just gonna film the rest of these. I guess episodes, you, could just, so. you could just, yeah, you can download them here. I wouldn't do that to you, but yeah, I can. You can. You can. Okay. I, I would let you. I hate that one. Okay, I have a quick question because I'm always gonna forget. Is that is it nice having a big trackpad like that? I don't like trackpads. I hate them too. I like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you like trackpads, you'll like that. Yeah. I was just wondering. I always forget to ask. I love a mouse. I'm a You're mouse not girly. The future. They're so old. I am the future. Trackpads are old? I don't think so. Isn't that what you just said? I thought that is what you just said. What did you just say is old? I was talking about the little um, eraser nubbin. Oh, I hate that. The red thing that's in no, the middle of the no. keys? Yeah. What yeah, is that? Be in the middle of the keyboard. What and is you go, that? You're like, and it would move around. Oh, is that the original trackpad? Yeah. 
Really? Yeah. That was what a trackpad was? In old was? keyboards they had, when they didn't have the trackpad, they had, it looked like a little eraser, but it was a mouse and you can move it around. Oh, that yeah. Is I remember doing it and I was just like, into the trackpad. But now you can be like. better? Yeah. Like, like, I get, yeah, the gestures are great. Gestures are amazing. My 26 male girlfriend, 24 female, told me she's pregnant, but I'm sterile. Oh. Drama! <laughs> So backstory, I got into an accident after my college and will never be able to have kids. None of my family members know of this. They know about the incident, but not about this. Mm. I've always wanted to be child free, so it didn't affect me much mentally. I finished my master's degree last year and never dated before. I got a very high paying job directly through campus placements. My parents immediately wanted me to get married after getting a job, but I wanted to work on myself and explore a bit. They said no. I said that it was my wish. All my life, I did what they wanted, and for the first time, when I talked against them, they were not happy. This was last year, and they gave up after COVID started. So I picked up some dating apps and went through them, but no luck. Then my parents introduced me to a family friend's daughter, and we clicked, kind of. Looking back, I was a fool. She said yes to everything, to anything I said and never complained about anything. I felt kind of weird about it. I wanted her to express her interest, but she always said it was she was interested in whatever I do. Well, I did not think much about it. I said, I won't have kids ever. And she surprisingly said, okay. I was like, damn, she's probably the one as it's very hard to find a partner who's child free in my country, or at least I thought. But we were in the initial stages and I hadn't told her about the accident. Long story short, we had sex a month ago. I used condoms because safety first. The next day on, she started ghosting me a bit. I thought it was due to my performance in bed and wanted to give her some space. Then she texted me infrequently and only replied okays and Ks and one line answers. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe she wanted to end the relationship and was sad, but I left it at that. Yesterday, all her family came to my house and she claims that she's pregnant and the father is me. Needless to say, I freaked out and wanted to collapse on the ground. I didn't say anything while they were talking about marriage and stuff that needs to happen because I got her pregnant. Please advise me on what n next steps I should take now, Reddit. And then there's an update. I mean, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Get that test. DNA test. And it's not even one of those things where like, oh, you Obviously don't trust me. Obviously, it's not going to happen, but yeah. just to prove to them. Yeah. yeah. It's like one of those things It's not like, oh, you, you don't trust me because he's like, I'm sterile. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not, this yeah. is not supposed yeah. to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he wore a condom on top of that. Yeah. 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 Condom on top of sterile, that's 100% he, effect. He's <laughs> like, I'm not even. You're like, you're not going to gaslight me. I know I yeah. can't have a kid, but if you actually are pregnant, then let's get a DNA test because that's not possible. So... Okay, we'll update them. Well, st is it a possibility that, because sometimes doctors get things wrong, could he not be sterile? But then he has a condom. Well, condom, you still They're not 100% yeah. effective. Condoms are 100%. Right. Right. Hey, hey, condom we, babies. Didn't we see what happened a few stories ago, a few weeks ago? Wasn't that what happened? Didn't that happen already? Get pregnant with condom. Yeah, a guy got pregnant. Guy got pregnant with condom. <laughs> guy got pregnant. <laughs> a guy got a girl pregnant, didn't he? And he was like... She wasn't use she wasn't using birth control, so I thought it was okay because I was wearing a condom. We have done so many stories. You guys There's probably forgot it. And that literally nothing's registering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Silly goose. I mean, yes, because when I first read the story, I was like, maybe that is it. Maybe that's the twist. Does he somehow actually got her pregnant because they got it wrong, and maybe he was only sterile for that period of time? Right. Which, it's like I have a new outlook on life. I can't have kids. I'm going crazy. Well, even people that, you know, get the, like, men that get the procedure. What's it called? Vasectomy. Yes, vasectomy. They can, they can like, it's happened. Well, yeah, you can they reverse. Still got the no, they pregnant. can on their own. Oh. What? Oh. You can get it reversed, but they can also, it can also fail. Because mm, I know that once you first have the vasectomy, you have to still wear a condom for, like, a period of time because there's still sperm. Mm -hmm. But eventually, it's like okay, it should be cleared get, out. Get them out, the, clean out the chamber. Yeah, basically. But okay, so update. Let me start off by saying I'm very grateful for all the redditors who took the time to read and give me advice. I was overwhelmed by the amount of comments and how many of you said it might not even be my kid. Looking at it from a different perspective gave me so much more insight on the whole situation. I called my boss and took the day off. I called up some clinics to get tested and was given a slot on Friday afternoon. Then I went to the store and bought some pregnancy tests and asked only her to come to my place tomorrow, aka this morning. 
I called my parents and before I said anything, my mom asked if I had any good news. I was shocked by what she said and asked what exactly she was talking about. She then played dumb and I knew the situation was more fucked up than I thought. I cut I cut the call and cried all night till 3 a.m. <laughs> Just hung up on your <laughs> Jeez. Grown ass man crying for the first time since eighth grade. Oh. She came oh, this wow. morning. <laughs> holding stuff in, but yeah. Yeah. Man, let it out. Let it out. <laughs> She came this morning with her parents, even after I told her to come alone. They were they were under the impression I was going to discuss engagement plans with them. I told them to wait outside and called her in, and they threw a fit. I told them they can all go or let her come in alone, and they said okay. I took out the pregnancy <laughs> test and gave it to her and told her to prove that she was actually pregnant and told her where the bathroom was. She started screaming at me. Never once had this happened before, and I was shocked at this. Then she went out of the door and called her parents in. Now everyone is screaming at me in my own home because I asked her to prove the pregnancy test, not even a DNA test. I told them all to F off. And one hour later, <laughs> my parents and them all came back and they spilled the beans. She was never actually pregnant, as many Redditors said. What? My parents were afraid that I was getting old for marriage and wanted me to marry and give them grandchildren. Wait, the parents? They said... They were in on it? That in arranged marriages, no need for the parents to actually get to know the spouse before because parents choose only the best for their kids. They planned this all and were waiting for me to have sex with her to do this. I broke down and cried again. All my life, I did exactly what my parents wanted. Always scored high and never asked for anything. I told them to get out and to never talk to me again in between crying. And they said parents know what's best for their kids and I should do what they say. Then I got extremely angry and told them to fuck themselves in my native language, which was very bad. For <laughs> once, I think they knew I was serious with them and they all left. I blocked them all before sending my parents a message to never again contact me in my life, even if one of them is dying. Cried for some time, went through some dog videos and went through all my messages on Reddit. And I feel like I owe you guys this update. It was you guys who helped me through this. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Oh my gosh. The parents were in on it is absolutely crazy. Oh that my God. <laughs> what do you think about parents that are that involved in their lives? Because we talked about is, this. At what point as a parent, at what age of your child, we're like, okay, you you have your own life. Because just as a parent, they have their own lives. Right. So at what point do we hit that boundary mm -hmm. where you take a step back as a parent and you turn into more of like a supporter, observer? To what's happening in your child's life well he said he was from a southeastern a southeast, southeast Asian oh yeah country. he's not from america so it's like we talked about this a few episodes ago of arranged marriages so it's probably very common where he's from of arranged marriages yeah so us being american we're like okay mom dad step off you know like let me be me mm -hmm. but that's not probably common where he comes from yeah so i, but I was this was this arranged traditionally or was he tricked did he know the parents knew no, I think so. He was he saying in the beginning, he was like, I think he said in the beginning, he was like, I stopped. I basically told my parents to stop telling me what to do. Yeah, I'm not going to date anybody. And so I think it would have been an arranged marriage. But they're like, since you're not going to listen to I'll us, we'll they're just get her pregnant. Him. So it was like a different it's like super manipulative way of but arranging they knew a marriage her from the beginning. Yeah, they probably knew who they well, were. They probably out. wanted him to marry her from the yeah. beginning. This is literally the plot of No Strings Attached. Or that movie with, or No Hard Feelings with Jennifer Lawrence, that one I was talking about on Netflix. Yeah. Where yeah. the parents hire her to sleep the with son. their son. Yeah. Which is crazy. Completely crazy. But to think, because he, he has a problem where he's like, oh, I think this girl actually likes me. Then he finds out his parents were like in on it. You're like, that's the weirdest, creepiest yeah. thing. And the fact that these parents were waiting for them to have sex, they were like, they had an extra plan. Not only did they get this girl in his life, then like when he gets, when he has sex, then we'll trick him into. There was a plot there. And what were they going to do? They're going to say, oh, like she had a miscarriage when a baby didn't come out. Because uh, she was lying about the pregnancy. So yeah. they well, had they to were, yeah. like get married and then like, oh, miscarriage. Sorry. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. What was the end goal? After that, that's a huge lie to have. That's a gigantic lie. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just, yeah, you can't, you can't hide that. And why did the, why did the girl go along with it? I guess she was just listening to her parents. Yeah. And then what was the whole ghosting thing in between? Like she 
or like she was giving them one word answers after they had sex. What was that about? Yeah, I wonder what that I mean, was about. If it's an arranged marriage, she's probably not even really interested in him. So she's like, I have to have sex with him because I'm probably gonna he's probably gonna be my husband. It was their supposedly like first time him having sex, so it probably was not good. And then it's just like she needed what she did what she needed to do and now she's like i don't need to put any more effort into it he's gonna be my husband it'll be fine yeah so i i think that just shows she probably wasn't interested in the beginning in the first place for both of them Mm -hmm. probably got forced into it oh my gosh not all first times are bad my first time was good but i wonder if there's any any (laughs) any, like what most guys say no i know it's good because it definitely went downhill i feel like there was definitely i was like oh this was luck. This was beginner's luck. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's any like comforters though that I've out here that have have maybe have that culture where arranged marriage is more common. Yeah. yeah. And they can give a perspective that we can't give. Yeah. Yeah, because all I know is from Indian matchmaker, which is I don't think it's the best <laughs> representation of arranged marriage. But I'm not against arranged marriage. I don't think really I'm not against arranged marriage. I do marriage see merits in it. Like mm-hmm. I I know um people that have had arranged marriages and they like like are literally in love with each other. I now. love it. Yeah. What do you think about him not wanting to talk to his parents ever again? Um I would neither thousand either. percent. Yeah. I wouldn't either. Like that's that's so far that's so far crossing a line. Mm-hmm. Like literally plotting plotting yeah and and weaving and like masterminding that's crazy and yeah you, you don't recover from a lie like that you don't like, recover, do you recover from, from, from a from pregnancy that? lie where everybody's in on it but you that's yeah. ridiculous i think that's what makes this worse like you know arranged marriage is like this family knows this family knows you know, even when you're getting in a yeah. church, it's not like a you agree to you might not be happy, yeah, but like you, agree, you, you know, know what's going one. on. But everybody knew but him. That's I feel like that's different. You but know, I don't know because you know I don't we don't have a culture where arranged marriages is around us. I don't know if Are that's you a, sure. What do you guys think this is? <laughs> you guys think you did this of your own free will? You didn't. <laughs> This was arranged by everyone. It was the hard work of a lot of people. Parents, us, we arranged this. (laughs) It's it's almost like I'm looking at the fruits of my labor. Uh, Girl, we already know we knew we did this. (laughs) We're matchmakers. We are basically little cupids, cupid awards. Didn't we have a story like where the parents lied? They were like in on something that the kid didn't know about. You gotta say more. I'm trying to figure out what the lie was. Like the parents. It's escaping me. The parents were scumbags, escaping. like the neighbor in this next story. Oh. Boom. Did, wait, were you seriously trying to... No, I was really trying to think Okay. It, but Maddie doesn't care about it. <laughs> I was like, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. It's like, you got the pause. I'm like, he just forgot the word. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, was just, I wasn't trying to transition. But I was just helping you transition. Thanks. She was trying to save it. Like no, coffee. So this next story is from r slash petty revenge scumbag neighbor broke into my vehicle and stole my stuff. So I returned the favor. Yes. So I rented a duplex in my early twenties. My neighbor was a wannabe gangster type and made the mistake of breaking into my vehicle one night. I had a small SUV with a removable soft top. So the neighbor figured it would be easy pickings to peel back the top and help himself to my stereo amplifier CD and some other miscellaneous stuff. I discovered the break in early in the morning after it occurred. I knew for certain who the culprit was. We were not in a heavily populated area and my neighbor was well known for thievery. I waited around for him to leave his place and when the opportunity arose, I went around the back of his house and looked through the bedroom window to find that sure enough, my stuff was sitting right there on the floor. I instinctively tried the window and as luck would have had it, the sash went up. Bingo. I hopped through and quickly surveyed the items laying around. It occurred to me that I could get some excellent revenge here if I played it right. So rather than just recoup my stuff and wind up in a fight over it, I borrowed a marker and proceeded to write my name on all of my stuff and also a few choice items just for good measure. I then climbed back out of the window and waited. Then when he finally came back, I called for some police presence and explained to them how my vehicle got robbed and I knew it was the neighbor due to seeing it through my window. We knock on his door and I can still remember the look on his face seeing me and the cops standing there. He's not even close to ready for the encounter and certainly had drugs on him. So he was very cooperative given the circumstances. (laughs) 
I politely explained that I know he broke into my vehicle and I needed him to return my stuff immediately or I will press charges. He went and retrieved my things and I pointed out my name written on them to the officer. I asked about my other stuff and while he looked back puzzled and dumbfounded, I rattled off a couple of choice items of his that I also put my name on earlier. The look on his face while he handed over his stuff to me (laughs) while the cop was standing there was priceless. That's so good. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Oh my God. I would have never thought anything like that. Man. That's clever. Yeah. That is so good. He legally robbed this man. <laughs> <laughs> and literally just hands it over. In like, front of the cops, he's just stealing. He's looking at him dead in the eye. He's like, that's mine. No, this is an stealing act out. right in front of your that, face. That TV. He wrote this. My this name's on out. it. Yeah, this is an act out. We got to act this one out. I'll be the police officer. Of course. I'll be the. I'll be the fuzz. I'll be the, the smart neighbor. I'll be the dumb neighbor. Are you going to be the soul and stuff? <laughs> Why do we always have to have an enemy? Well, we need, we need characters. Because there could be two cops. Oh, okay. Okay. I can be a second cop. Who's the first cop? Me. Maddie? Yeah. yeah. Good cop. Perfect. Good, good cop, bad cop. Good cop Y'all got to do cop. that. Okay. Okay. Am I the bad cop? Yeah. Yeah, you can be the bad cop. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So who's the bad guy again? I'm the bad guy. Okay. All right. But we'll start at Brandon seeing inside the... Or did you want to start at you? Or you want me to rob? Yeah, okay. break, rob me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> this dude's got so much stuff, man. Okay. Radio, coats, breath mints. Okay. <laughs> okay let's get in here. <laughs> Directly on my living room table. Okay, I'm going to go to work. Bye. Mm. Uh, it's like early in the morning god dang oh i just love this neighborhood it's like so great because it's like nobody would ever do anything heinous towards me you know it's like you wake up except for like wanna be whole ass gangster that lives next oh to me it's like oh. he wants to be something but it's like you know we're in the suburbs where's her <laughs> no <laughs> know where you're know where you are you know okay let me get ready get into why is my door open? Oh no, my my bread mitts? <laughs> no, he stole my bread. My breath is so fresh. <sighs> no, I'm. No, I got something for him. No, nah, no, nah, he want to be gay. I got something for him. No, 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 cause cool. Okay, okay. Creep over to the house, and he left the stuff right in the open. He's making this too easy for me. He's making it way too easy. He's making it. Okay, okay. Let's see if it is. Oh, oh. oh he, he leaves his door unlocked. So he wants to rob people, but he leaves his windows unlocked. You're literally asking me to stay. I a, trust this neighborhood. I'm illegally still from. All right, all right, all right. All right. Oh, this nice little switch. I'm going to just write my name on that. Okay. Oh, that's my phone. Okay, we'll write my name on that. That's my, my throw pillow. We'll write my name. Ooh. Gotta love a half drinking Royd Bull, you know? Am I right? Am I right? I'm gonna write my name on that. Okay, let me call the police. Hello, 911. These donuts are really good. They're delicious. 911. 911 here. <laughs> hey, can I have some um, legal assistance? Uh, I, need I, need, I need help. I need help. My neighbor robbed me, animal. and I Heimlich, know he Heimlich. robbed me. And I just want to get my stuff back. Um, we'll send someone right away. Where do you live? Um, nine nine seven California That's Road. That sounds like a made up address, but we'll get them right over Jesus. there. Okay, yeah, it is. But yeah. Thanks for saving my life. If I have to hey, Officer it. Thornton, uh, we got a oh, big oh. Uh, Officer Thornton. Pick up Hello, the- Officer Thornton. Jeez. Yeah, uh, twenty three nineteen reporting. Thank you. We I've been told you to do the numbers, and you keep forgetting. This is ridiculous. Yes, yeah, seventeen forty two. Oh, we got a seventeen oh five over at nine 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 California Street. Uh, a robbery. A robbery in this town. In this town. Can you believe it? It's a safe neighborhood. I don't know crazy. what's going on, but can you, uh, you and your partner, get over there right now? Sure, Susan. I mean sixty two ninety four. They want and us to go right now. Maybe if you uh, answer my text for dinner, <laughs> but. We don't have to talk about that now. I would love. I'll reach out. Okay. Ew. Over and out. Love you. <laughs> Listen, Did she just gives you? us free donuts all the Did time. Love you. Yes, she gives it. I went on a date with her the other night. I swear to God, she brought her parents. She, her parents gave me pumpkin pie, and they tried to make me marry her. But it's like, what do what do I do? Like, I live 
Officer Thornton, we really need you to get over there. Okay. We really need let's to get over go. there. Let's yeah, 2019, go. we're going. We're okay. going. Let's, let's just go. Say let's you go. love me back. Over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do we got here? So basically, my neighbor robbed me, and I know he <gasps> robbed me because... He's a wannabe gangster. Like, you know, I, you know, he's one of he's, those. Yeah. He just sticks out like a sore thumb. You know okay. what I mean? Like we're like over here, you know, being peaceful. Cause look, you see this neighborhood. Okay. Would anybody right. rob anybody? No. On exactly. 99962 Avenue. Exactly. Mm. Or was it 9999? You're the one, you're the one who reported the robbery, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's an ambiguous address. Right. Like yeah. it's just like shrouded in mystery. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I'm so confused as to why this neighbor decided to rob me. You're kind like, of talking a lot. Should we go get your stuff? Yeah. You, you, yeah. 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 Let's do that. Yeah. Let's You're a very talkative guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm fed up. <laughs> I'll help you get your stuff back, but I have a date to avoid. Let, so. Let's, let's avoid. go up here. We'll knock on the door. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow out. your lead. All well, right. actually, I should probably talk first. <clears throat> Open up, police. Hello. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hello, officer. Hey. How are you? I hope that's tobacco. How are you? It is tobacco. Yeah. How you doing? Right. It is very much tobacco. Typical. So did you rob somebody this morning? You did rob someone, it no, seems I like. Rob. I was going to ask you a question, but. I was at work. So no, I didn't rob anyone. Hold on one second. Can yeah. you? Can I talk to you really quick? What do you want to talk about? Do you think he robbed him? I know he robbed him. Okay. okay. Look at him. All right. Okay. I can hear you. This is police profiling. I didn't rob him. Did you hear me? I did, oh. but I was not, I was I was just gonna let you vibe okay. out, you know. I wanna right. know where's you the stuff. You robbed somebody. Oh my god. Where's the stuff? <sighs> yeah. Oh his stuff. Yeah, I labeled everything. And what, everything that's what mine. Was I labeled. Everything that yeah, you buddy. Lost. Yeah, everything. Okay, let me t- it was outside, so I picked it up and like put it in my house. I actually don't want to hear it. I okay. just want his stuff okay. returned. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, we're yeah, looking for yeah, what? Did, let coach. me see the list he gave <laughs> okay, me. Okay, thank you. We're looking for a radio, this is a, a throw pillow. Yeah, Wait. you need to let a, a radio. Yeah, yeah, a, I a think throw a, pillow. I, didn't I think I, steal, the, the, I mean, I didn't find some those. mints. They're, they're all mints? labeled. They're all labeled. <laughs> I'm looking for a refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, hand me that. Thank you. I'm looking for an oven. An oven. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> whole appliance. Oh my god! Why would you steal that? I don't know. And this one at the bottom. Yeah. I'm looking for a house. <laughs> I'm looking for his house. <laughs> he wrote his name. Every- he this yeah, looks deed. like it's his. The deed. Give this man his deed oh back. <laughs> Officer, this is. These are mine. I don't know you. what no, he did. No, my name's on it. Oh and I'm also looking Sharpie. for your social security number. Yeah. My social yeah. security has my name on and it. And the passport. He wrote his name on my social security. He just wrote it over my picture. Officer, what this is kind not- of monster steals like it's this? My How did you Look have time off. to do all of this? Why would you do something oh like my. this? And the PS5. I'm going to need that too. <laughs> I'm also looking for a kidney. <laughs> and your soul <laughs> while you're at it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh yeah! Wait, one more thing, officer. One more thing. The uh, family lineage. How did he get inside? I need the family lineage. I'm looking for a family trust as well. (laughs) Well, I'll take that. Oh God, it's warm. Oh my God. Uh, Oh my goodness. This is not losing a lot of blood. (laughs) (laughs) And (laughs) (laughs) the kidney is when Sadie was like, "I'm out." Kidneys. She's like, "No kidney." There literally is always a point in these skits where they just take it, and I'm just like, I'm literally just gonna watch from this point. <laughs> and we're always trying to get there. That's the goal. <laughs> Although I think the celery one is still <laughs> the, the first one, one is the wildest one ever. <laughs> celery wouldn't do that, but celery in love. I guess. Celery in love. <laughs> I wonder if that guy was living alone, like this next story. Wow. <laughs> it was a. It was a cut dry one. It was just like straight to the yeah, it It's very got wry, right to but it. I'm pretty wry, apparently. Pretty wry guy. I love that you're finally accepting. I know. Me. She knew she was. She knew it. Especially when we read the definition. She was like, dang, okay, that's so me. And that she felt actually it. is me. Anyway. <laughs> She's stepping into her wryness. <laughs> yes, yeah, a little wry gal. <laughs> so, She's right. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Relationship Advice. My 23 female boyfriend, 24 male, wants to move in with me, and I want him to live alone first. Mm. That's fair. Okay, I can I can see that. So he's moving straight from his parents to you. And you yes. don't want that. Yes. 
So my boyfriend and I have been together for 10 months. He lives with his parents, 50s, male and female, and younger brothers, 10, 16, 18, no sisters. Before current events, he was over at my place basically every night. A couple of nights ago, he said he wants to move in with me if I'm up for it. I've been at his place more than once, and I've seen how their dynamic works. His mother does everything for all five men in the house, cooking, Mm. cleaning, the works. Basically, all they have to do is put their laundry away after she washes, dries, irons, and folds it. The reason the parents aren't forcing them to contribute is that that was the parents' agreement. He works, and she stays at home, so she raises the kids slash runs the household, and he pays for everything, with one of the clauses being that as she does everything, there's no need to involve the boys. As a result, my boyfriend cannot do anything. I don't know how much of this is actual cluelessness or if he's just trying to get out of doing stuff, but he has told me like completely sincere and I checked with his mom that he can't even fry an egg, which is why when my boyfriend suggested moving in together, I said that I wanted him to live alone first. His plan was basically to go straight from his mother's house to my flat and I told him my hesitation, which is that he can't do chores. He then offered to pay more rent, 75% in exchange for me doing all the chores. I said, no, I don't want to be his mother or his maid. I want to be his girlfriend. Then I told him I wanted him to live alone, going from his mother's house to his own place, figuring out how to do all those things he's never done for himself, learning some basic life skills, and then revisit us living together. This caused a huge argument, biggest we've ever had. He's taken me saying he has no life skills as an insult, which it kind of is to be fair, and has basically said that clearly I don't want to live with him at all. I pushed the moving in time back and have only said we'd revisit it after a few months of living with him alone. I did say revisit because I wanted to make sure he actually knew what he was doing and wouldn't immediately switch back to offering more rent for no chores. This was a couple of nights ago and he just stopped talking to me. He's at his mom's. He's online. He's talking to his mutual friends who have said he's responding. He just won't answer any of my calls and texts. He told our friends what happened and they all have his side saying that I was really mean and cruel. I love him and I do want to live with him eventually. I just don't want to live with him if I'm doing everything. And the one thing I don't want him is paying extra for me to do all the housework. Is there some sort of compromise or some other option I'm not seeing? What can I do to fix this? And then there's a mini update. I think she's a little bit in trouble if she wants to have a relationship with this guy because I'm not sure how much he's willing to change if he's just like, I'll just do what my dad why did. Yeah, I'm like, he's literally watching his mom be this example. Like He's like, that's what I want in a woman. She's not interested in being that, so and I don't just, think it's going to work. Just the way he responds, I'll pay more rent. That's literally what his dad did. Yeah, yeah. he's just he's, trying to live that relationship. Yeah, Because I think her asking that is really fair. Like That's something that I want to do. I still live with my mom. I want to move out on my own before... Brandon and I were to ever live together because I'm like, there's so much I need to learn before I want to potentially go out of the house and be like, okay, well, I relied on my mom, so I'll just rely on you now. It's like, no, Mm -hmm. I need to learn a lot of stuff before I try and live with someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's really fair for her to ask that. And I think she said it herself. She's like, I don't want to be your mom or your maid. Right. And that's what he wants for her. So. Because the only thing I, I, I do think it's in this situation, it makes sense to me, but Overall, I'm like, I don't think it's bad to move from your parents into yeah. a place together, but only if your parents are like teaching you life skills and saying they yeah. really set their sons up to be bad. And like my mom had us washing clothes when we were like eight years old. <laughs> so I'm like, we were doing all that stuff. We we're cooking and doing all that stuff. Very young. Matilda style. Very much yeah. Matilda style. And I'm like that because we knew we had to do that stuff as we get older. It's like it doesn't help to baby them and. These kids are, he's, how old is he, 20-something? 24. 20, 24 and don't know how to wash his boy. Boy. See, this is why I talk about destroying the patriarchy. Literally, I'm on that crusade so hard right now. But, like, when you come to this type of dynamic, girl, I really don't think there's hope because there's a fundamental difference. Like, you are like, okay, let's both, you know, share this 50. He's willing to pay you off. He yeah. literally offered to pay you off so that you would do all the cooking, do all the cleaning, do literally everything in the world on top of working your nine to five that you do already yeah. mm-hmm. so that he can sit around and ask you to have his beer ready when he gets home. Are you crazy? Ooh. 
Are you literally crazy? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Are you? Are you literally? Crazy? You're 24 and you're telling me you can't even fr- you can't even sustain your own life and you're 24. Bet you don't even know how to make ramen noodles. That's embarrassing. That's really, mm. really, really, really unfortunate for you because I re- in this day and age, especially, I hope he finds a woman. That's willing to do that for him. There are women out there who they are. This, so you there can are. find them. She ain't it. And it seems like you need to start your search again because <laughs> she seems not the one to she be not, trifled with yeah. this BS. And it's 10 months. Yeah, you're not. You can call it a day. <laughs> yeah. You're not losing that much. Dang, he wants to, I, I'm just thinking about that now. He wants to move in after 10 months. Oh, people will be moving in way sooner than 10 quick. months. Yeah. I hate that. Especially but. with COVID. With COVID, oh, yeah, weren't COVID. they moving in super quick? You match, you go on one day, you're living together the next month. Another thing, she said the family, his family was on his side? <laughs> no, his, yeah, his, his family, his friends, his friends. His friends were on. They have all of the course, same ideals. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah, his friends are. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But then I would want to talk to the mom, figure out, like, how did she, like, do that for so long? Well, I don't know if it would necessarily make sense. Well, I mean, yes, but it's not like even the mom's going to be potentially on OP side because the mom was okay for yeah, doing it. Yeah. Doing this. Like you said, there's women out there that do that. The mom is a woman right. who was like, yeah, I'm okay with doing I'm that. Okay yeah. with doing that. This is a good situation for me. Mm-hmm. So update, he called me and agreed to talk. He then basically said that he was never going to be willing to learn to do anything and even suggested dividing up the chores. Then I do my half and he'd hire a maid to do his half. <gasps> Suffice to say, this was something... It's this was something over. of a turn off, and by the end of the conversation, we broke up. Well, it's, I think it's for the best. It is for it's the best. definitely for the best. You dodged a bullet. He would. He would. Okay. He'll do anything. He'll like, literally do anything. I'll He's hire, gonna hire his mom. He's going to hire Part his mom. Time. Like yeah. mom, and not even really hire her. He's like mom. Get mom, do just get over here, mama. She's like, I'll just extend mom, do my, my responsibilities to this place. I guess. Mom, do my laundry. Mama, mommy. So I do want to talk about something. Oh, what? Um, oh about three minutes ago, I started to sing the um, Frosted Flakes jingle. <laughs> uh, no one responded. I no really one thought what it was. was. I didn't know what it was. Serious. Can you start I it was over? Really hoping. Yeah, I could start over, but I just want to mention that, like, I felt because we had to talk about our feelings, and I felt like <laughs> this is a relationship we want to maintain, we want to build, we want to grow. Right. So yeah, I we felt hurt. Us. I felt hurt when that happened. <laughs> I also felt that we pain. We get that. Because I was singing. I get that. I just about over being your girlfriend because it fit this whole scenario and no one even acknowledged it. Steph is acknowledging here. it back there. <laughs> Steph is <laughs> noticing everything we're doing, but people on the couch are like, yeah, we're like I don't know what that each is. Other. We're ignoring each other. So sing the jingle again. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Tony. Don't know it. I literally. I like the things you do. Okay, wait. Hey, Tony. If I could, I would be you. The The one one and only only tiger tiger. with the The one one and only only taste. taste. (laughs) Teeth or taste? Because you guys were both confident about that. No, I was trying to do, because every time I don't know a song, he's like miming the words. So I was trying to do it for him. I thought he was trying to get the words from you. (laughs) That's what I thought. Brandon was trying to get the words from you, right? Yeah. And they both don't know the words. He, He would. When, when he wouldn't know the words, I would mime, a lot of these songs I mime it out for him. <laughs> and so he just tried to do the same thing for me. And I was like, taste. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, <laughs> Where it goes, frosted flakes, flakes are, are more, more than good. <laughs> They're <laughs> great. Is it, was this a 90s jingle? I feel like it must have. And that's why you guys are not hearing it. I've anything. never heard of it. And I'm older than Brandon. This I'm not like younger old. than you. It sucks to be in my 30s. I'll tell you that. You're in your dirty thirties. I'm in my dirty thirties. How 30. deep? Because remember, like, oh, I'm pretty sure I know old you are. Dirty yeah. thirty was like the crew. So I'm pretty sure he's thirty three or thirty four. This is your Jesus year. It's my Jesus year. Yep, thirty tree. It's my tree, just tree, 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 tree. Are you twenty four? <laughs> twenty five. You're twenty five. Guess how old I am? Twenty six. Five. Twenty six. Okay, Rob in the cradle. Guess how old I am. <laughs> Uh, you 23. are 24. 23. Oh, you could turn no. 24 in January. I do. It's another thing we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, Aries. enough, enough talking about these two hubbies relationships. Like, like this these next, next story. story. Today I fucked up by ruining my husband's relationship with his best friend. Ooh. Oh. That's something you don't do. How did you do that? Because the best friend asked, hey, you guys won the lottery and you promised me. <laughs> Just, can I have half shout of it? Out, shout we, out old story. One eats, we all eat. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> so my husband and I are both 35. We've been together for seven years and married for five. He has two older brothers that he isn't particularly close with. The one person he's very close with is his cousin, Aaron. They lived together after my husband graduated college. He was the best man at our wedding. And Aaron even lived with us for a year while we were married so he could finish school. I like Aaron a lot. He even felt like a brother-in-law to me, much more than my actual brother-in-laws ever felt. My husband and I have had a rough three years between COVID. There was a point where both of our fathers were in terrible health. We've dealt with infertility issues. And sadly, in July, we had a stillbirth at 34 weeks pregnant. And Aaron had been there for us through that. He's probably the person my husband can lean on the most for support. Last night, I got a call from Aaron's longtime girlfriend, Jennifer. She asked if it was okay if she could come over and have some girl talk with me. Jennifer and Aaron have been together about as long as my husband and I have. She has three kids from a previous relationship, and we love them. They spend the night at our house, and her older kids dog sit for us. She comes over and proceeds to tell me some serious issues she has had with Aaron, and she's at a loss at what to do. The main crux of her issues are Aaron is in an insane amount of debt, and he basically used her as a place to crash for seven years. Ooh. He's constantly criticizing her for parenting, saying she babies her teenage children. And finally, he's lying about where he's going, and his locations have him at a massage place that does happy endings. <laughs> Those are real? Yeah. Those are real. I, there was a, a ring in our town. Really? Like three or four years ago that was caught by the police. No. Like, oh, yeah. Bunch Those of are them. real? They're definitely real. Shut up. I thought they were fake. I no. thought no. they were fake. They're absolutely real. In our town? In our town. Yeah. It was like you like you're speaking from experience. I didn't get caught. I didn't get pulled <laughs> up. But I think it was like five or six places they found in our city. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. Our town is pretty shady. No, our town is pretty shady. Why is our town yeah. so shady? <laughs> Jeez. I hate to say that I knew about the financial issues and the parenting issues. Um, even my husband and I have called Aaron out about how he talks about the teenagers, but I had no idea how bad it was. We talked through it and I flat out asked her if he is going to a massage parlor and getting happy endings behind your back, would you still stay with him? And she said yes. So I gave her some advice about boundaries and talking to him and I left it at that. After she left, I went upstairs and told my husband what she said. He proceeds to have a complete breakdown. He's in tears. I finally get him to talk and he starts saying things like, can I just have one person in my life that I can trust? I can't go to my brothers to talk. And now I, now I can't trust Aaron because I know he's been doing this shit. He's fucking better than this. Then just, just completely and utterly destroyed. I feel terrible. I didn't even know about it when I told him what Jennifer said. I didn't even think it could ruin their relationship. Aaron is the only person he goes to for advice. He really looks up to him as a big brother. And I just completely destroyed that image. I'm going with the classic pretend it didn't happen technique this morning, but I just feel like I completely took away the one family member who he felt comfortable turning to for emotional support. What do I do? And then there's an update. No, the brother yeah. did. <laughs> You didn't make the brother a bad person. Yeah, he kind of fucked it up for yeah. everybody. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, you just revealed who he was. This yeah. is the person you're getting advice from. This is the person you go to advice. This is how he lives his life. Yeah. And of course, that's always going to suck when the person, like you thought they were one thing and you find out that they are not who you thought they were like that is such a fall from grace yeah mm -hmm. experience and Ooh. especially since that's that person that you confide in like in that you're extremely vulnerable with like that's that's like damn yeah you know somebody that you hold so special yeah and you realize yeah like you said your image of them is not Just true not what you thought so update Wowza, thank you everyone for your kind words and your jokes. It certainly helped calm, calm down my spiraling brain. I don't have much of an update on Jennifer and Aaron other than they have broken up, but my husband and I have Good. heard that a time or two and don't really buy it. I'll go ahead and give some clarification on some common questions. Why do you think you messed up? Honestly, because of my husband's reaction, the minute I realized he was breaking down and crying in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, I messed up. 
I just felt horrible that I made him upset. I know it wasn't me. It was what Aaron did that upset him, but maybe it's the former Catholic in me. I'm programmed to look inward for blame, LOL. Is Aaron your husband's only friend? No, we actually have a great group of friends who are very much our chosen family to us. Aaron is his cousin and the only family member he's really close to. We have a really good relationship with his parents and siblings, but they've never been close. He's also the youngest of all the grandkids. His cousins are all at least five years older than them. So there was never anyone in his family he was close with growing up. He and Aaron got closer in college and it felt like he finally had that person who understood their family that he could confide in. Why aren't you in therapy? Oh, don't worry. We are all in therapy. When our baby died, we got into group therapy, couples therapy, and individual therapy. Mm -hmm. Our couples therapist has been trying to get us to focus on things to look forward to again. Simple things like going out to dinner, going on a trip. We are unfortunately in a real life negative headspace these days, which I think is the other reason he had such a big reaction. Tiny update. My husband and I work from home. I tried my hardest to avoid the subject about Aaron and Jennifer. Then while I was in the shower, he came in the bathroom and said, by the way, yes, I am still pissed about Aaron. We went out to dinner last night. I did apologize to him. Not exactly. I'm sorry. I told you more like I'm sorry that happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I'm pissed at Aaron. Paranoid me said, you sure you aren't mad at me at all? And my husband said, I'm 1% mad at you because you probably shouldn't have told me after I ate my gummies. We take Delta 8 gummies at night to sleep. I guess he had already taken a few by the time I came upstairs. I did tell him that there were more shitty things that Aaron has done that I didn't get a chance to tell him because he was so upset. <laughs> and I asked him if he wanted to know that stuff, to which he said, not now, maybe another night. Yeah. We enjoyed our steaks and chilled for the evening. But they kissed. Probably. Oh my God. That's so Share an intimate moment. I love love. <laughs> He's That's a so love whore. Cute. A love whore? A lover boy? Oh. <laughs> I thought she said love whore. And I said, oh what are you guys talking about? <laughs> a oh lover gosh. boy? No, I really love that. I like that he responded so well to it. Yeah. I'm glad they're broken up. Oh my gosh. Get yeah. rid of him. He's a deadbeat. He's a bum. Seven <laughs> years, you're just. You're just chilling at a place to live. Uh, what is it? Hobosexual. That, Hobosexual. That is Frank Gallagher core. Who is that? Shameless. She's literally been talking about Frank Gallagher all week. <laughs> <laughs> she cannot get over Shameless. Woo! So Dia discovered Shameless 20 years <laughs> later <laughs> after it aired that she's very happy about it. Her face when she was like. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Man, you know who Frank Gallagher is? You know who Frank Gallagher is. Dia, give me some grace because there was a, lot, a long time in your life when you didn't know who Frank Gallagher was. Ooh. Oh, you made her cover her mouth. Oh, she. Oh, this is the coffee thing. Oh. That was actually so quick and so. Now Maddie's quick like that. That one got me. Yeah. I'm just saying I I'll eventually know who he is. Yeah. I don't know who he is now. I'm just telling you, I felt that one. Mm -hmm. I, I love you, Sadia. Thank you. Like I, I love you too. That one was humbling. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. That Humbling. was wow! Like when you truly just don't know what to say, yeah. and you're All grasping you just for suck sticks, it up and, say, you're right. and you just gotta be like, "Yeah, that yeah. was good." Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, talk about Frank Gallagher, but you're absolutely right. Go ahead. She's humbled out. I, yeah, it's, uh, I just literally say. don't even have anything to say after that. Well, I hope this isn't the last days of our friendship, like this next story. <laughs> So you're, is your launching pad. You're making transitions out of my pain. <laughs> oh, brother, I mean it. Brother. She's transitioned off my pain for like the <laughs> She loves it. She's feeding off of it. And she's just having a great time. Because her smile is so big when she's doing it. She's so Dude, happy. You're her it. step stool. <laughs> no, like, that's not true. I just want to get Don't say that. That's I just want to get from under Maddie's foot. <laughs> <laughs> get from beneath my so he's like, unhand me. <laughs> All right, fine. I won't do transitions anymore. Because I'm hurting the people I care about. Me. Except for Release Sam. Me. No, you would love to hurt me. Yeah, so everybody else I won't do transitions for. Thank you. Next few I episodes, mean, it's care. just the Sam. The damage is done. I don't care. You can do it on me, man. A lot of things can be done. Uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> hey, celery. No. Hey, celery. Go ahead. Celery, you like it. Not celery being the new code yeah. word. Yeah. <laughs> My 40 male ex-wife, 40 female, wants me to be with her in her last days. 
from His relationship, relationship advice. advice. Wait, what was it again? What was mm. it? My ex-wife wants me to be with her in her last days. Oh. Yeah. So oh. backstory. I met my ex when we were both 10. She was slash is my twin 10? sister's best friend. Mm -hmm. oh. And we've always been kind of a trio growing up. Excuse me. We started dating at 14, got married at 23. Things got ugly, though, because five years after getting married, she told me she had a month long affair with her coworker. Apparently, the guilt was too much for her, so she confessed. We tried to work through it, but after a few months of trying, I knew that despite the fact that I loved her, I couldn't trust her anymore. She told me she still loved me, that she waited for me, and proved that I was the only one. I wanted to believe her, but, you know, some things just can't be fixed. We never had kids. Three years after the divorce, I met my now wife, 38 female, and we got married two years after dating. She's everything I could ever dream of in a wife and more. My ex, as my sister told me, they're still besties, has never really recovered. She quit her job and is now working in a church. Throughout my relationship with my wife, she kept trying to get back together. And on the day of the wedding, she told me she still loved me and would mm. love no one else. Mm. She said this was the last time she would bother me, but that she wait for me however long it took. Apparently, she's honest in that regard, at least, because my sister says she's never been with anyone since. Mm. Dang, that's kind of sad. Yeah. So here's what happened recently. My wife and I, married for seven years now, have two kids, seven female and three male. My sister came over with her kids so the cousins could play. While my wife was out to pick up lunch, my sister sat me down and told me the situation about my ex. Apparently, she only has less than six months left to live. She refused treatment mm -hmm. and wants to live the last few months to the fullest. I guess that's why her and my sister really went out of their way to travel despite the pandemic. One thing on her bucket list, though, was that she wanted to feel like my wife again. No sex, no kissing, just wanted me to be around the house. She still lives in the house we lived in and maybe hold her for from time to time. I told her I wouldn't do that because that was pretty much emotionally cheating. My sister kept arguing and begging me to at least see her and hear her out. No screaming. The kids were in the next room with her with her oldest daughter till my wife came back. My sister told her the whole story. While she looked upset, she said she understood where my ex was coming from. When my sister left, my wife and I talked about it. My wife knows everything that happened in the past with my ex. She says that while she isn't thrilled about the idea, she won't get upset if I decided to see her on a regular basis. My wife is literally the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I love her more than anyone. She makes me happier than I have ever been in my life, even in the good times with my ex. She knows I won't cheat. I have zero romantic feelings for my ex, so there's nothing lingering there. I don't hate her or anything. It's just that love that I had for her has long since died. After thinking about it for a while, I'm honestly 50-50 about it. I know I don't owe her anything, but I feel like I might regret not seeing her at least one more time since the last time I saw her was on my wedding day and that wasn't a good encounter for either of us. Unless you count the times I occasionally see her at the store or something. I honestly feel like despite what she did, she still deserves to go with some peace. On the other hand, I'm not entirely sure that it might potentially affect our marriage. My wife says she's okay with it and I believe her, but I can't be sure that she'll feel the same way after it happens. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything to jeopardize what I have right now. I'm not thrilled about going myself, to be honest. Any advice? What should I do? And then there's an update. Yo. I think the the ex's terms of like what you wanted is a little bit much. Yeah. Um, I think that they can meet somewhere in the middle. I think that it would be fine if like he, you know, every so often just stop by, maybe like bring her some food, like dinner or whatever. And they like sit and have a little chat. A little kiki. Yeah, a little kiki. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think in a way it would still be giving her what what she what the ex wife wanted without because i know he was worried about like crossing some boundary with his current marriage mm -hmm. um so i think that there's a way to do that like be there for the ex-wife while not necessarily feeling like you're endangering your current marriage or like r still respecting your current wife like okay yeah she obviously she's dying like she's transitioning so i still care for her maybe just like drop her off and let's have dinner and let's chat I believe that there's like this thing that people talk about where it's like, don't put yourself in a compromising position to cheat. If if you don't want to cheat, don't put your, don't even put yourself in the position to do it. Not saying that he would, but I don't know. Going to the house, I feel like is a step towards putting himself in that compromising position. Like who knows, like even though it's her last days, 
she still got like what six months to live mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at this point and it's like a lot could happen in six months that the whole connection could be rebuilt in six months or like you know it's because it's not like you're starting from ground zero with a different per- like you've had history with this person right and you still care about this person this person cares enough about you that they did not get married and to an extent it's like you know she stepped out of the relationship and that's what caused a downfall but it's like she still wants that connection it's on her bucket list before she dies so it's like how far she's willing to go who knows but yeah i don't i I think the safe route would be just to do somewhere public Mm -hmm. like don't don't go to the house don't do anything like don't put yourself in the position to compromise what you have in the future i guess i just don't think he would do that at least from the way that he's writing I really genuinely think he's moved on. And if there is love there, it's not a romantic love. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the only thing I can do is kind of put myself in the position of the wife where it's like, I would be supportive either way where, yeah, maybe it's like, I don't want you guys cuddling or anything, but (laughs) if I, I have trust in you that it's not going to mean anything romantic. And if you want to have that closure with her, I don't want you to regret that. But also if you, say to yourself, I'm not comfortable doing that. It's going to be weird. Who knows? I might have feelings, which you never know. I guess I would be supportive either way because I feel like the way he's writing this, I have trust from yeah. how confident he is that he's like, I, I'm not in that situation. Yeah. I love my wife. I would never do anything to jeopardize he that. Said, I think he said that his love had died, like since died for mm-hmm. the ex-wife yeah. in whatever time frame mm-hmm. that was. I don't know. I, I feel like that 50 50 though is just like of him wanting to do it versus him not. Mm-hmm. I feel like that moral and compass is just going to get to him either way if he's like with her. I don't know if that will help anything. I I don't or, know. I feel like it either, either. Okay. If he does go, it might just, I think it would probably reopen a wound because mm-hmm. that's six months of him doing, I guess, whatever conditions that they set to. Like, well, I don't know if they're going to spend time with each other for six months. I think it's just like, I'm going to meet you a few more times or one more time before you pass. Gotcha. Yeah. If it's one more time. Okay. Then that's different. But if it's like for the rest of the time, she's alive. Every like, Tuesday. Yeah. Like once a week, once a month. Yeah. That's where I'd be like, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. What do yeah. You think? I think I would agree. I would split the difference. Like Sadia said, like I wouldn't go full her terms. I probably would see her one more time. I was just like. We have an experience. We kind of maybe, I don't know what you want to reminisce, just talk, do that stuff. But I'm like, my wife is my real priority. So yeah. even though my wife, knowing my wife is okay with it, she's being supportive, I still don't even want to, just like you said, I don't want to put any more potential stress on the relationship that doesn't need to be there because I don't have those feelings for you anymore. This is literally from me doing this for our old love and for what we shared. Yeah. But what really matters to me is my wife and my kids. So anything that puts too much stress on that, I'm not going to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, we can do this one time. We had a good time. We talk about it. And that's probably it for me. Yeah. Because I, I love that the wife is supportive, but there's still little things that can happen. Just like, like oh, you're going there every week. And it's just something, it's not even rational. It's not like she's thinking like, oh, you shouldn't. Because I, I do think she probably trusts him. But it's like something irrational. Like you go there every week and you do this every, and it's like, yeah. A little bad thing gets in your mind. I'm like, I don't want her to have that. I'm yeah. not going to do that. Mm. I think the support is great in theory, but in actual practicalities, I don't know. Yeah. Because it's like there's certain, certain things like, you know, you could say you're okay with. And then once it actually plays out, it's like, you're oh, actually I, I'm not okay with Yeah, that. I don't like this. So it's like. Even though she should be able to voice that. Yeah. It happened. Like if you went twice and you're like, okay, I don't like it anymore. Then he's like, okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So update, quick recap. My ex-wife who I've known since I was 10 cheated on me, but now is dying and wants me to be around before she dies. It's been almost three weeks since I posted and a lot has happened since I got some solid advice from a lot of you guys, especially some who messaged me from their personal experiences. And I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So Mm -hmm. here's what happened. 
As many of you guys suggested, I talked to my wife. We had a long discussion about the whole situation and I assured her that no matter what, she is and always will be my first priority. I always assured her that while I wanted to say my goodbyes, I would never act like her husband. It would be more like seeing a childhood friend or something like that. I also told her I would never spend the night nor would I be alone with her. She was more comfortable after our talk and was pretty okay with the idea with me seeing my ex again. As you guys guessed, she really felt like she was forced into being okay with it when my sister asked, but but this time she really was okay. Mm. So I talked to my sister and after a long, long heated discussion about what my role would be in the visit, she agreed to the boundaries my wife and I set. A week later, my sister and I came over to our old marital home. It was surreal because the emotions from way back came back to me. I didn't feel any sadness nor hatred or anything negative. I saw my ex who was waiting for us in the living room and she cried when I walked in. Most of you suggested she was faking it, but while she was still strong, you could tell almost immediately something was wrong with her. I indulged her with a hug and talked to her for a few hours while my sister made lunch. I showed her pictures of my kids. I told her stories about what they're like. And honestly, I didn't know how I would react after I saw her again, but it just feels like seeing an old friend you haven't seen in a long time. There was no hate or anything like that. I walked around the house and it was pretty much the way it was when I left over a decade ago. Mm. I'm not really sure how I feel about our wedding photos still framed and pictures of us still around the house, but it wasn't really my place to say anything. The three of us had lunch and played board games all afternoon and honestly felt like back when we were kids and the three of us would hang out together. It was nice. I left at around six. She was sad, but she understood. When I hugged her goodbye, she whispered, I love you to me, but then said how she's happy I was able to find the happiness she couldn't give me. That part got mm -hmm. to me, to be honest. I was fighting back tears. I told her I'd see her again, and she asked if I could bring my kids next time. I told her I would, and I left to pick up dinner for my family. I told my wife everything that happened, and she was quite happy about the outcome. I guess it helped that I brought her home her favorite food, but she also agreed to let me bring the kids next time. Overall, it was a great experience seeing her again. I feel like I needed it, and I would have regretted not doing so. Again, I'd like to thank everyone who gave me advice. Also, please don't roast my ex too much. She made a mistake and paid the price for it, but it doesn't mean she's an evil person. This right. will be my last update. Thank you so much, Reddit. He's yeah. good. He's, He's a, a good, guy. good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good guy, OP. Especially, I think the biggest thing is that the fact that he relayed what happened back to his wife. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That's your partner. That's the person you share everything with. You yeah, but. Tell. Yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, it's like, especially how emotionally heavy it was for him towards the end. Mm -hmm. Like, just the fact that he was able just to come right back, just relay everything that happened, and just keep her in the loop. Yeah. That, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I think you guys are right, though, with coming with the friend aspect of what you were saying of not making anything romantic. And I think the boundaries that he set with his wife were really good. And I'm happy that he had a good experience and it was more like a friend thing than anything. Very good to not be alone. That's a great thing. Like, yeah, there's no point risking it. Let's have a person to buffer. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed like the sister was trying to like hook them back up. She again. definitely she was. Wanted. She was like, no hugs, no kisses, but sleep over. Sleep over in the same bed. Take your clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe do a strip tease for her. <laughs> Maybe some kisses. Maybe light kissing. No kisses on the mouth. Just a couple smooches. No heavy petting, but light petting. Light petting for sure. Light petting. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that was a wholesome story. To that end was on. very I cute. I loved it. I'm tired of these people cheating on their partners and destroying them and don't going be cheaters. To don't Massage be cheaters. parlors and getting happy endings. Let's just be good <laughs> husbands and wives. And Let's just kids. be good partners. Yeah, good partners. Yeah, who wants to end it? Who wants to give us the outro? Really? Someone Sam? Wants to do it? Yeah. Sam, you do it. Oh my gosh. Um, thanks everybody for watching the Comfort Level podcast. Uh, we had a lot of fun here. Yeah. And uh, don't steal from your neighbors. Bye. Don't steal. Bye. Bye, guys.